Hello, I'm Carl Miller. This is a strictly informative video where I talk about stats and statistics of sweatshops with some personal opinions. I will talk about the sweatshops and the inclinations around the both past and present, as well as some child labour and some interviews from the Grand Applause in a year after. First, I'll be laying down some basic facts about sweatshops. Official workers are meant to be paid $92 per month, but many reports have surfaced of workers only being paid $50 which is close to half of the minimum promised wage. Workers are also forced to work long hours, averaging around 16 hours a day. But the worst case in the surface, I've seen workers being forced to work 72 hours without anything to sleep or break. If you work this out, it's 112 hours a week, which is close to 5,824 hours a year. With little no pay, they are averagely paid around $1,104, which is 10 times less than the average part-time worker in the UK. Verbal and sexual abuse are common and well documented occurrence in sweatshops. There is a quote from an Indonesian that women in these, in these rough situations. Girls in a factory are harassed by male managers. They come on to the girls and call them to officers and whisper them to their ears and touch them, bribe them with money, and threaten them with firing them if they do not have sex with them. Despite being no workers, the managers constantly take advantage of the innocent and pure working girls. This shows that they have no respect or no inkling of care for how the workers are treated and how the conditions are of the buildings. As well as women, adults who are forced to work in sweatshops, there are also children. From ages between 4 to 14, they are forced to work the same hours as the others, which is 16 hours a day. A higher total of 250 million plus children in the world work in sweatshops. I will now talk about the incident in Bangladesh known as Rana Plaza. First, I will lay out some basic facts. So, 1,135 people died and another 2,500 injured. Despite the workers talking to the managers about the poor integrity of the building and discussing how he has cracks and, and breaks in the walls, they did not care. They did not listen. Despite the constant warnings, none of the managers cared. This talks about how lowly respected the workers are in the, in the worst sweatshops and how they are treated less than humans. In the construction process, the eight-story building known as Rana Plaza. The builders cut corners with materials they use and the whole building process behind it. This shows how much little people care about the workers who work for them and create the clothes behind it. As well as this, the administrators were bribed with money to look the other way so people would not know how shoddy the building's foundation was. Here is now an interview from one year after Rana Plaza incident. may be upsetting for some viewers. It's called Eternal Embrace, showing two of the people killed when the building fell. It's a photo that sums up the horror and the tragedy of the collapse, and in the three years since, it's become well known. Well, uh, Taslima, thank you very much for your time. Many say that that photo was iconic. It went viral shortly after the building collapse, and uh, it sparked a lot of conversation as well at the time. But three years on now, has anything really changed? <laughs> Uh, three years have been passed and uh, today is the third anniversary of Rana Plaza collapse but uh, the victims of Rana Plaza they have not got justice and in our country we demanded uh, the highest punishment of the responsible person but still three years uh, we have not got the justice our owner our government and international buyer brand, they are trying to say they are very much conscious about the safety of workers now and they are bound to say about about the safety, about the wage and security of workers like Rana Plaza but uh, all these things are like promises and uh, like uh, theoretically they are saying this but in practice we cannot say that everything has been changed because uh, the who are responsible for uh, this uh, killing, workers killing, uh, they have not got the punishment still now. So we can, uh, this kind of example is very bad for us and this kind of example when the uh, owner, the responsible uh, government official, they will not got the punishment, that thing will create chance. On the screen right now, looking at a photo, suddenly named A Final Embrace. This photo was taken by the Bangladeshi photographer. Here is a quote from that man. 
This image, while deeply disturbing, is also hauntingly beautiful, and embracing death, its tenderness rises above the rubble to touches where you are most vulnerable. By making it personal, it refuses to let go. This is a, a photograph that will torment us in our dreams quietly. It tells us, never again. This photograph is, has invoked many questions about the identity of both the man and the woman, and what the relationship behind them is. At the moment in time, still unknown the true identity or who they are. The enigma behind the photograph invokes a passionate emotion of love even after death.